so example um, three and four both involve division polynomials. They look like this. So you're dividing a polynomial, probably second, third, fourth power polynomial by a binomial, uh, probably first power of x right now. Uh, down the road we're going to maybe get to ones that have a higher power of x than this one. But uh, for now just it'll probably be a binomial. And the division process is long division, but it's abstract, so sometimes it's a little confusing. And I'm going to hopefully show you the place where you need to pay extra close attention so you don't um, mess up. First thing is to put the divisor and dividend in descending order and write the problem in long division format. What that means, going to this problem, is this is the dividend. It goes inside my quotient bar. Descending order, highest power to lowest power. And... <coughs> include zero terms if necessary. thought I had that written in there. Uh, zero terms, if you have a highest power of x cubed, which we have here, that means x squared, x, and constant have to show up also. If they're there, fine. If they're not, you put a zero term to replace it. It's going to happen in example four, so we'll see that when it happens. And here, we have 5x cubed. We have negative 2x squared. We got positive 5x, and we got positive 2. Every power of x, starting with the highest power, has to be accounted for. So the highest power is 3, so 3 has to be there because it's the highest power. No other power bigger than 3 has to be there, but all the powers less have to be. So squared first power constant, which is x to the 0. Every power of x has been accounted for. Negative 4 plus x is the divisor. Again, descending order, x goes first, minus 4 goes second. When you rearrange order, make sure that the sign stays on each term as it is. So, for example, this 2x squared is negative because it's in front of it. This 5x positive because it's in front of it. I've seen people see a minus after 5x think 5x is negative for some reason. But, again, when you're rearranging things, whatever's in front of the term establishes a sign. Make sure the same sign sticks to the object. That's all step one is, setting up the problem correctly. That's how I copy the problem out of my book. That's in my book. This is the first thing on my paper. Second step on your sheet says to divide the leading term of the dividend by the leading term of the divisor, put the result on the quotient bar. So let's take a look at what that means. The leading term is the first term, so the term in front. So this term is the leading term of the dividend. This is the leading term of the divisor. For right now, that leading term of the divisor almost always is going to be x. When you divide by x, what happens to this? You subtract 1 off the power, right? So basically the division step for right now, every time, the answer is just going to be whatever this thing is with one less power. So positive 5x cubed with one less power is positive 5x squared. It's very important that you get the correct signs up on that bar. So this is a positive being divided by a positive, so we get a positive. But again, all we're doing is dividing by x, which is taking 1x off of x cubed, which makes x squared. 5 is not affected by that division. Step 3. Multiply that quotient, the answer we just got, by the entire divisor. Okay, so I'm only dividing by x, but when I get the answer up here, I'm going to multiply this by x and negative 4. So I'm going to get two products down here. When I do 5x squared times x, I get 5x cubed. These should always match. When I do 5x squared times negative 4, I get negative 20x squared. Okay, so again, whatever the answer is that you get, multiply by the entire divisor, both pieces here. This and this to get two products. Okay. The next step is where people start messing up, usually. If there's any place that people mess up, this is the step that it happens. So here's what I want you to look at closely. This bold word, every, that's italicized and underlined, okay, you're going to get multiple terms on that product, change every sign to its opposite, and combine like terms. So, here's what I got as my product. This is that product that's being referred to in step number four. Change every sign in that product. So, 5x cubed is positive, make it negative. 20x is negative, sorry, 20x squared is negative, make it positive. Change every sign in that product and then combine like terms. What should happen, if you do this correctly, these should be exact opposites. Okay? I got this by dividing that by that, and then I multiplied this times that to get that. So basically I divided, and then I multiplied, so I undid what I did. So these are always the same, so when I change signs, these should always be opposite. All right? I'm not crossing these off because I'm supposed to cross them off. I'm crossing them off because they're opposite. Let's make sure the opposite happens, make sure the signs are changed. 
What I'm going to do here is either add or subtract based on the signs I'm looking at. In this case, the signs are different, so I subtract the numbers, and 20 is bigger, so it's positive. Okay, and that's what step 5 is telling us to do here. Or, sorry, step 4, combine like terms. Step 5, bring down the rest of the terms. So, that's what I got out of my first division, bring down the rest of the terms, so plus 5x plus 2, and now I'm down to this point. At which point, step 6 says, if you are not left with a constant, repeat the process from step 2. A constant is 2, or 10, or negative 5. If you still have x's, you've got to go through the whole division process again. So we're going to do this whole process again. We're going to do it a little quicker this time because now we're getting better at it. Leading term divided by leading term. Positive 18x squared divided by positive x is positive 18x. Again, you have to put pluses and minuses up on the answer. So if it's positive, put a plus sign. I didn't need a plus sign on the first one because it's the first term of an expression is understood to be positive. 18x is not understood to be positive, so we have to put a plus sign. Multiply. 18x times x is 18x squared. 18x times negative 4 is negative 72x. Multiply the product, which is, or the answer here, times both pieces of the divisor. So 18x times x, 18x times negative 4. Change every sign in that product. So 18x squared is positive, make it negative. 72x is negative, make it positive. Then combine like terms. 18x squared minus 18x squared. I'm crossing those off because they're exact opposites. Positive 5 and positive 72 are both positive. I'm going to add them together. 72 is bigger, so it's positive. Bring down the rest of the terms. This isn't a constant, so we repeat the process again. First term in the dividend divided by first term in the divisor. 77x divided by x is going to be 77, right? Kind of 77? Plus. Plus 77. Very good. And pluses and minuses are required, and they answer every single time. <coughs> Make sure pluses and minuses always show up. Correct sign based on the division. Multiply. 77 times x is 77x. 77 times negative 4 is negative 308. We change every sign in that product. 76 is, 77x is positive. Make it negative. 308 is negative, make it positive. 77x minus 77x are opposites, they cancel. 2 plus 308 is positive, 310. What kind of 310? Positive. positive. So this is the remainder, we're left with a constant. So step 7, or sorry, 6, yeah, 6. If you are left with a constant, this is the remainder, include the term remainder over divisor on the quotient. Watch what I do over here. Positive 310, right? Plus. Okay, you have to put a plus or minus sign there. It's positive, so I put plus, and then I put the remainder value, 310, over the divisor x minus 4. Okay, this sign has to be there. Some of you don't like to write pluses and minuses there. You have to have a sign there, so make sure you put a plus. If it was negative 310, put minus, and then 310 over x minus 4. So put its sign here, and then put its numerical value up there. That is the entire quotient. 